Is Schwab abandoning its banking business? And is this the end of the Schwab era? Hello, member super savers and bond course fans. I hope you're having a better week than Schwab is. Here's where Schwab started off the week on Monday, reaching a high of $76.10 per share during the day. And here's when their stock price fell more than 11% to a closing price of $67.43 after the second quarter earnings announcement on Tuesday. Now, Schwab's overall second quarter numbers did come in worse than the market had expected, but that was not the main reason for this precipitous drop in share price, nor the main reason why their share price fell another 5% on Wednesday. So here are the three topics that we'll be covering in today's Schwab update video. One, the worse than expected news about second quarter earnings. Two, the even worse news about their banking business that took everyone by surprise. And three, what the latest Schwab news means for you and me as Schwab customers. As usual, here's our front of video disclaimer. For a detailed disclaimer, please refer to the end of this video. Let's dive in now, folks. 2024 was always meant to be a transition year for Schwab, but this transition year is turning out to be harder, less fruitful, and more disjointed than what the market had expected, especially in light of Schwab CEO Walter Bettinger's upbeat tone during Schwab's last earning announcement in April. As we discussed in that Schwab update video just three short months ago, linked below, the story back in April was a decisive sounding one about Schwab's ultimate return to growth and profitability. The TD Ameritrade integration was on track, business was growing again, and costs were down. Bettinger and his team were taking action and successfully steering Schwab in the right direction again. Well... The story that Bettinger surprised us with this past week was quite different. It was not one of success, growth, nor greater profitability. Quite the opposite. Schwab's key financial metrics have basically flatlined over the past year. In this column, we have some key financial metrics. In this column are the numbers for the second quarter of 2024. And in this column are the numbers for the second quarter of 2023, so a year ago. As you can see, total net revenues, total expenses, and net income have not moved much at all. And what's worse, bank deposits keep shrinking at Schwab. Here's what the bank deposit numbers look like at the end of each quarter for the first half of 2024. And here's what bank deposit numbers look like for the last three quarters of 2023. Between the second quarter of 2024 and the second quarter of 2023, so basically in the past year, Schwab customers have moved about $52 billion of deposits out of Schwab Bank. And the fact that Schwab is losing bank deposits should come as no surprise to the Schwab fans in our Diamond Nesting community, because that's exactly what we've educated you to do on this channel. Don't rely on Schwab's bank sweep program that parks the uninvested cash from your brokerage and retirement accounts at a measly 0.45% APY, but Invest any unused cash you might have into Schwab's money market funds like SWVXX, SNVXX, SNOXX, or SNSXX. At the time of this taping, money in any single one of Schwab's money market funds will earn you at least 5%, meaning 11 times more than money sitting in Schwab Bank as a deposit. And if you ask us, if your money is still earning a very modest 0.45% or part of this $252.4 billion sitting in Schwab Bank, you should really think about potentially shifting some, if not all of it, into Schwab's money market funds or other higher yielding conservative investments, such as short dated treasury bills. This Schwab money market video here and this how to buy T-bills with Schwab video both also linked below for your convenience, show you how to do this. Now, to be fair, Schwab did have some good news on the client and scale side. Again, here are some key financial metrics. 
Here are the numbers for the second quarter of 2024, and here are the numbers from a year ago for the second quarter of 2023. Net new assets and new account openings have grown over the past year, which on the surface seems like good news, but personally, I think it makes for an even more troubling scenario for Schwab because this good news on the client front has failed to translate into similarly good news for overall revenues, net income, and bank deposits. And Schwab essentially confirmed our conclusion because what came next on the second quarter earnings announcement was even worse news. First, I'm going to give you the positive spin from Schwab's executive team about their direction going forward. Basically, Schwab is making a strategic shift that will re-emphasize their brokerage and asset or wealth management businesses, essentially helping folks like you and me to buy bonds and stocks and otherwise invest our money, and in some cases with the help of a financial advisor. And they will move away from their banking business, which entails taking lower rate bank deposits and lending the money out at higher interest rates. They will continue with core lending in their banking business, but to clients only, meaning they will still have margin lending, mortgages, and home equity lines, banking business that will keep their customers happy and staying with them rather than go elsewhere completely. That's the big news. They will run a bank in as small a size as will be needed to meet these direct client needs. And if they get more cash and deposits from their clients and they need to do that, they may either hand that excess money over to a trusted banking partner or worst case, even turn it away completely. This strategic shift out of their banking business will be gradual and happen over a matter of years. So. This may not sound so revolutionary to those who are more familiar with Schwab as a brokerage platform and to those who are sometimes fond of saying Schwab Bank and Schwab Brokerage are different. But here's the thing and the potentially not so positive news. All these financial numbers we showed you earlier, all these numbers are for all of Schwab, both their banking business and the brokerage and asset or wealth management businesses combined. In fact, as you can see here, almost half of Schwab's overall revenue comes from net interest revenue, from taking these lower rate bank deposits and lending the money out at higher rates. So almost half of Schwab's revenue comes exactly from the banking business that Schwab plans to shrink. And to really bring this home, what's happening is that the 13th largest bank in the United States, and yes, Schwab Bank was the 13th largest bank in the U.S. in terms of assets held at the end of the first quarter this year, according to the FDIC. So what's happening is that the 13th largest bank in the United States just basically said that they're abandoning their banking business to a significant degree and will be potentially outsourcing this to other third party banks, one of which may include TD Bank. Of course, Schwab worded the story much more smoothly than I just did. Plus, they pitched the third-party banks as a way to extend further FDIC insurance to clients, increase liquidity, and so on and so on. But when you look behind the curtain of those fancy words and hopeful optimism, here's what's really happened at Schwab. Schwab Bank was sitting on a ton of cheap deposits in 2022 and early 2023, meaning cash that they were paying you these low yields on. Schwab invested a fair chunk of its cheap short-term customer deposits into long-dated treasuries for higher yield and did this exactly at one of the worst possible moments, just as the Fed was beginning to aggressively hike interest rates, an almost classic case of mismatched liabilities and bad risk management. Schwab had and still has substantial unrealized losses on their balance sheet as a result, but it successfully sidestepped the fate of the late Silicon Valley Bank, which did something similar. What killed SVB and what saved Schwab from its own near-death moment was that unlike SVB's clients and investors, Schwab's clients and investors stuck with them during the bad times which is one of Schwab's greatest strengths, by the way. I see the Schwab love on this channel all the time, and I tend to agree with some of you. Their customer service is amazing. 
More on this later, though. Let's wrap up what really happened at Schwab first. When Schwab customers wanted some of their cheap deposits back to invest in higher yielding investments, Schwab didn't want or couldn't afford to sell the long-term treasuries they bought not too long ago. Those were going down in price rapidly as the Fed kept hiking rates. And so Schwab relied heavily on expensive short-term funding to return those client funds. As I've said before, those of you with higher yielding callable bonds from FHLB now know where some of that money has been going, to Schwab. And by the way, after an initial peak, Schwab did a good job bringing down their FHLB borrowings again over the past year. Here's where FHLB borrowings were about 12 months ago, and here's where they stand with the latest numbers. The problem is, it seems to be going up again a bit relative to earlier this year. But overall, so far so good. Schwab got through a potentially hairy situation well and in one piece, so to speak, with the help of their loyal customers and investors. But, and that's where Schwab's expectations management might not have been optimal, but potentially a bit short-sighted in my mind. Back in April, Schwab reiterated to investors and customers that while 2024 would be a transition year, things were more or less back under control and business was improving. Well, this control and improvement turned out to be short-lived because as I said at the beginning of the video, suddenly three short months later and after the departure of several key members of Schwab's executive team, including their head of RIA custody, chief operating officer, and chief financial officer, the message this past week, at least to me, sounded more like this. Actually, we've almost lost control. We can't get our banking book in order, and the only long-term solution we can think of is to voluntarily shrink our balance sheet and the banking business. And yes, we'll be shrinking that exact same business that has been generating nearly half of our revenue, by the way. And to make matters even worse, and yes, it does get worse. There were absolutely zero details about Schwab's future disclosed. How will they go about actually implementing their new small bank strategy? How will they replace the significant chunk of lost interest revenue from their banking business? And what will the new, much smaller Charles Schwab look like? Personally, I'm at a loss when I try to understand what exactly Schwab wants to do and how. And many other investors seem to be in the same boat. And that's why the stock has been falling and falling since Schwab's second quarter earnings announcement and disclosure on Tuesday about abandoning its larger banking business. Because while the market generally dislikes bad news, the one thing it hates even more than bad news is unexpected bad news and vaguely worded 180 degree strategic shifts in core businesses where the investors don't get much detail, which is exactly what happened this week with Schwab. Results coming in below expectations, coupled with a surprise strategy shift that was announced without much detail on how exactly it would work, which brings us to the critical question for today and the next section of this video. Those of you who've been with us for some time now and have seen our other Schwab updates will notice that this one is more negative than the others. So let's talk a bit about why. Regardless of whether you choose the word shrink, downsize, or outsource, Schwab, the 13th largest bank in the U.S., is partially abandoning its larger banking business, which generates about half of its revenue, with no clear plan for how they will replace that revenue. So the way I see it, yes, this may be the end of the Schwab era as one of Wall Street's growth darlings in the sector. There is no way of sugarcoating this news, as much as Schwab has tried to do for as long as they've tried to do it. As many of our diamond nest egg regulars know, the vast majority of our holdings are with Fidelity, but we still have a bit of cash with Schwab. That cash will stay there so that we can continue making Schwab tutorials for all of you as needed. Plus, while I may be skeptical about Schwab's prospects as a growth darling in the market, I'm not directly worried about the safety of my money there right now. 
And in fact, I've been working on opening a new account with Schwab this month and had planned on transferring some more substantial funds over to this new Schwab account from another broker with whom I'm not thrilled. My initial thoughts before this past week's developments were, let's diversify a bit. Well, that transfer of new funds into Schwab is on hold right now. As someone who has listened to every Schwab earnings call for the past two years and gone through all their publicly available numbers with a fine tooth comb, I simply don't know what they're doing anymore, nor do I think that they necessarily know what they're doing either when it comes to the overall direction of the company. And if they do know, then they've done repeated bad jobs at communicating this and too many about faces. This was not the first earnings call or press release with a negative surprise that's happened in recent years. Maybe Schwab will surprise us with some kind of more proper strategic partnership at some point in the near future. Maybe they won't. Either way, I personally have come to expect more volatility and bumps ahead for Schwab at this point, just from their sheer lack of clarity in this past week's call. And if I'm going to move my money from a broker that I'm not thrilled with to a new broker, then I need to be thrilled with that new broker and crystal clear on what they have to offer. And I'm neither thrilled with Schwab at the moment, nor am I crystal clear on what they have to offer. So while Schwab figures out the kind of business it wants to be in the future and how they will replace their lost banking revenues and how small their bank and their balance sheet will shrink to, I'll just leave my money with the old broker that I'm not thrilled with, or perhaps move it to Fidelity instead, even though that would go against my diversification mantra. So let's see. Now, this is my perspective from someone who was working on opening a new account with Schwab and planning on moving in new money, and who knows a fair bit about their platform, as well as about their mishmash strategy over the past several years. Let's talk about this now from the perspective of an existing or long-standing Schwab customer. What's there to worry about, if anything? Here's what hasn't changed in my mind at this point in time. I still think that Schwab has a good fixed income offering, a solid brokerage platform, especially considering what they're doing on the asset and wealth management side. And of course, absolutely amazing customer service. I always love hearing happy greetings like, hi, I'm Tom from Texas. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking with today? And I do think that if you're below the FDIC limit of $250,000 on Schwab's bank side, including whatever CDs you might own with them, and below the $500,000 SIPC limit on the brokerage side, there isn't really that much you need to worry about. And if you're invested in Schwab products, like SCHD, for example, there's also probably not too much to be concerned about either. As we talked about in this SCHD video from last year, link below for your convenience, funds like SCHD are generally set up so that investor assets are shielded in the event of broker bankruptcy. So if you're an existing and or long-standing customer whose Schwab accounts are within the regulatory FDIC and SIPC thresholds, the current volatility may likely not be enough reason to move all your Schwab assets over to someone else and have to figure out a new platform and new products. It's just a lot of time and effort. And if you're a registered investment advisor and RIA using Schwab's platform, you may even be happy that Schwab is re-emphasizing brokerage and asset or wealth management businesses and moving away from their banking business, basically focusing on what they do well and finally admitting defeat and getting out of what they don't do so well, because this will likely make Schwab an even more focused custodian going forward. Having said all this, and regardless of whether you're an existing or long-standing Schwab customer or whether you're an RIA using their platform, you should still be aware of what's happening with Schwab. Because big changes are brewing, and as Schwab tries to figure out what its grown-up self looks like, Schwab's stock price volatility will likely continue. And negative media coverage may come along with it. But that's me, and as I always say, everyone's financial journey is different. Do leave a comment below if you have any thoughts and or questions to share with the community about Schwab's latest announcement. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that it's helped answer some of the top of mind questions that you've had about Schwab lately. 
Now, if you actually came here to learn more about fixed income, but watched all the way to the end of this Schwab video anyway, then I'd love to invite you to take a look at this video next on our latest bond courses, where I walk you through the easiest, safest, and most cost-effective way to start investing in bonds and build a bond portfolio while yields are still attractive. Or join the ongoing dialogues about all things Schwab and fixed income in our next live member Q&A on Monday, July 22nd at 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time, 2.45 p.m. Pacific Time, where we'll be talking about the highlights of the upcoming two-year, five-year, and seven-year T-note auctions. Check out the links below this video for more details on our bond courses and YouTube Super Super Saver membership. All right, member Super Savers and Bond Course fans, see you again very soon with more brand new wealth building content for your financial journey.